Right friends, welcome back to questions and answers for 34th week. Look at the first question. Central Electricity Authority has given approval for around rupees 4,500 crore, 1,000 megawatt Turga pump storage hydel power project. The state we are talking about is West Bengal. It is proposed in Purulia district of West Bengal. So, if someone talks about the Turga pump storage hydel power project, this is in West Bengal. Please don't forget. Pink bowl bomb disease. This is associated with the cotton. Previously, BT cotton was presumed the resistant crop for pink bowl worm. But nowadays, pink bowl worm is also affecting BT cotton. That is the real worry for the cotton growers. Second important aspect is the white fly is another disease which devastated cotton farmers in the Malwa region of Punjab. So, if someone talks about white fly disease as well as the pink bollworm disease, these are affecting cotton crops in recent times. Please don't forget. India's first multi-bank mobile application. This is very important. The first multi-bank mobile application is Chill and it allows users to connect seamlessly with multiple bank accounts. So, customers can manage all their bank accounts on a single platform. So, that is the beauty of this multi-bank mobile application. Look into the next one, Visa PayWave platform. This works on near field communication technology or popularly known as NFC technology. Here, you need not swipe the card, only you have to just tap and go. So, it is a contactless payment technology. Customers are required just to tap and go and they will have embedded microchip as well as antenna. Embedded microchip will be there along with antenna will be there. Antenna is based on radio frequency and this enables contactless communication with the reader at the checkout. So, the reader at the checkout will get signals through antenna embedded in the card. So, this works on near field communication technology. So, if someone talks about Visa Pay Wave, that is near field communication technology. Please don't forget. Name the state which reached number one position in solar power capacity edition. That is Tamil Nadu. Tamil Nadu, all of you are well aware, is ahead in wind power and now similarly in solar power also, Tamil Nadu each ahead just above Rajasthan and if you look at the total solar power capacity addition in the country, Tamil Nadu is the leading at 1368 megawatt as on date and Rajasthan is closely followed by 1307 megawatt. And please don't forget the six states, Tamil Nadu, Rajasthan, Gujarat, then Andhra Pradesh, Telangana, Madhya Pradesh. These account for around 80% of solar power generated in the country. And at the same time, total power generated in the country crossed 3 lakh megawatt. This is very important point. Total power generation in the country crossed 3 lakh megawatt. And at the same time, total renewable energy total renewable energy, the major share is wind power followed by solar power crossed 44,000 megawatt. And please don't forget, India plans to achieve the target of 1,75,000 megawatt by 2022 as far as renewable energy is concerned. Out of 1,75,000 megawatt, 1 lakh megawatt constitutes solar power. So, government is giving more emphasis for solar power. Please don't forget. Rio Tinto, this is based in London, United Kingdom. And this plans to shut down rupees 2,200 crore Bandar Diamond project. That state we are talking about is Madhya Pradesh and it want to exit because of some restrictions imposed because this site is a closure to Panna Tiger Sanctuary. 
and other important aspect is nmdc that is the public sector undertaking under the ministry of steel with headquarters in hyderabad he is undertaking panna diamond mine project in madhya pradesh the coach of deepa karmakar is bishveshwar nandi please don't forget after recent olympics certain coaches came to limelight coach of pv sindhu is pullala gopichand coach of sakshi malik is kuldeep singh coach of deepa karmakar is bishveshwar nandi please don't forget which is aptly described as tech startup capital in india please don't forget bengaluru is considered to be the tech startup capital in india look into the next question hjm is considered to be the main reason behind the success of several road projects in recent times what is meant by hjm hjm is a hybrid annuity model and recent times government of india especially the road transport ministry introduced this model that is hybrid annuity model after the introduction of hybrid annuity model success rate of road projects increased enormously name the state which launched a sauni yojana this was recently launched by the prime minister what is the sauni yojana sauni yojana is saurashtra narmada avataran irrigation yojana and this is basically using the excess flood waters of narmada by using excess flood waters of narmada various dams in saurashtra region will be filled various dams in saurashtra region will be filled for that purpose excess waters of narmada river will be used and with the network of pipelines water will be carried from narmada river right up to various dam sites in saurashtra region and 1126 kilometers of pipelines will be let and total irrigation potential will increase by around 10 lakh acres and it is being undertaken in 11 districts of saurashtra region you may ask where is the saurashtra saurashtra is the region in gujarat and please don't forget important city is rajkot and the present chief minister vijay rupani is from rajkot so he is from saurashtra region and this program of uh, sauni yojana was started long back in 2012 when narendra modi was the chief minister of gujarat and now first phase was opened by the prime minister narendra modi and please look into this slide if you look at the boundaries of this saurashtra region one side it is a gulf of kutch on the other side it is a gulf of kambath and other side arabian sea so the borders of uh, this uh, saurashtra region please uh, look into this uh, slide gulf of kutch arabian sea and gulf of kambath anyhow water patch region of uh, this uh, saurashtra will get water from narmada river under sauni yojana please don't forget look into the next one gift city is coming up near ahmedabad this is the joint venture of gudc gujarat urban development company limited and ilfs another important aspect is gift city is gujarat international finance tech city basically to develop ahmedabad as the financial capital or you can say at par with other financial centers like new york london singapore so to bring various financial services into the country and for that purpose this gift city is being developed and this is for the first time a city is being developed as the capital of financial services and as i have already told you it is india's first international financial services center and on completion at an estimated cost of around 78000 crores of rupees over the next 10 years 42 million square feet of commercial space will be created look into the next one the financial sector regulators appointment search committee is headed by cabinet secretary 
basically to recommend the names of various persons to head financial sector regulators and i have given examples of financial sector regulators rbi sebi pension fund regulatory development authority irdai these are examples of financial sector regulators and to appoint or you can say to recommend persons for various high level posts in financial sector regulators this financial sector regulators appointments search committee was constituted and this is headed by the cabinet secretary please don't forget through gst which of the following is not going to be amalgamated basic customs duty will remain please don't forget the main purpose of goods and services tax is to integrate indirect taxes both at the central level as well as at the state levels and here basic customs duty will remain please look into this slide i have listed various taxes which will be subsumed once gst comes into force which of the following is considered as the greatest tax on the poor the greatest tax on the poor is please don't forget inflation inflation hurts poor badly because of inflation purchasing power of rupee will decrease hence poor people the people working in informal sectors will be badly affected so rightly greatest tax on the poor is inflation that's why the central bank gives more emphasis to control inflation look into the next one government proposed for raising minimum broadband speed from 512 kbps to 2 mbps and national telecom policy in the year 2012 targeted a broadband speed of 2 mbps by 2015 but it could not be achieved now government revising the guidelines to call the speed as broadband it should be 2 mbps and government is proposing this change at present it is 512 kbps and in future it will be 2 mbps look into the next one under gst goods and services tax which of the following can have higher tax demerit goods goods like the cigarettes will have higher tax if you look at the tax structure of goods and services tax most of the goods will be taxed at standard rate standard rate is expected to be around 18% and some essential goods like pharmaceuticals will be charged at lesser tax and precious metals like gold silver will be taxed at around 2 to 3% and at the same time demerit goods like cigarettes will be taxed at higher tax slab of around 40% or 50% right so i have given examples for precious metals essential goods demerit goods please look into this slide and look at the next question which of the following is in the news and blamed for bihar floods faraka barrage we discussed in detail about faraka barrage and the siltation because of faraka barrage and subsequent rise in water levels in bihar we discussed last week please listen to that capsule and in the options given here you may ask where is the ratle dam ratle dam is uh, situated in jammu and kashmir it is a hydroelectric power project on river chenab please don't forget then tehri dam is on river bhagirathi in uttarakhand and at the same time kishan ganga project please don't forget it is a hydroelectric project on kishan ganga river in jammu and kashmir so the answer for this question is farka barrage farka barrage is blamed for causing bihar floods look into the next one name the bank which announced issue of credit cards recently s bank announced that it is entering into the domain of issuing credit cards and at present hdfc bank is leading in the issue of credit cards in the country followed by icici bank then state bank of india and i would like to tell you credit card advances are unsecured there is no security they are unsecured advances 
that's why the interest rate will be very high if we are not able to pay back within the grace period given and as bank would like to go aggressively to sell credit cards not only to its customers but also others look into the next one world bank issued bonds denominated in international monetary fund special drawing rights currency in china international monetary fund has got srs and now World Bank issued bonds denominated in STRs in China and this is for the first time in three decades and duration of these bonds three years and they were issued for a value of 500 million STRs. Look into the next one, sole repository for know your customer will be Sersai. You may ask what is the Sersai? CERSA is Central Registry of Securitization, Asset Reconstruction and Security Interest of India. And CERSA is nominated as the sole repository for maintaining KYC database. You may ask what is the need for KYC? KYC is basically to prevent money laundering and CERSA will maintain know your customer repository for not only bank accounts but also insurance accounts, pension accounts, mutual fund folios, DMAT accounts. For all these things, this Central Registry of Securitization, Asset Reconstruction and Security Interest of India will maintain registry as far as KYC is concerned. And look into the next one. Name the country which approved military packed constitution in a referendum. Thailand recently approved a military backed constitution. Please look into this slide. This is the map of Thailand. And at the same time, if someone talks about red shirts movement and yellow shirts movement, these two terms are associated with Thailand. And there is a bitter rivalry between these two camps, which are popularly known as red shirts and yellow shirts. And the Prime Minister is Prayut Chan Ocha. Look into the next one. Who is made the brand ambassador for Beti Bachao, Beti Padao campaign in Haryana? Sakshi Malik, the bronze medal winner in the recently concluded Rio Olympics, will be the brand ambassador for Haryana, Beti Bachao, Beti Padao. And you may ask what is meant by Beti Bachao, Beti Padao? The main motto of this Beti Bachao, Beti Padao is to improve child sex ratio. And nodal authority for this is Ministry of Women and Child Development. Union Cabinet recently approved amendments to Double Taxation Avoidance Agreement with the Cyprus. Look into this slide. Cyprus is the country towards the eastern part of the Mediterranean Sea. And if you talk about the, the capital of Cyprus, that is Nicosia, and the currency is Euro. Cyprus is the country in Eurozone, please don't forget. And what is the purpose of amendments to double taxation avoidance agreement? The main purpose is to fight against tax evasion, round tripping, and base erosion and profit shifting. All these things we discussed under various modules, please go through them. And some time back, double taxation avoidance agreement was amended with the Mauritius. Now, cabinet approved amendments with regard to DTAA with Cyprus. And in future, Singapore also will come into picture because majority of the investments under foreign direct investment are coming from Singapore. And after the amendments to DTAA comes into force, that means from the notified date, tax on capital gains on transfer of shares will become source-based instead of residence-based. We discussed in detail what is source-based, what is residence-based. In the lecture concerning amendments to DTAA with the Mauritius, please listen to it. That's why my advice is, 
please follow current affairs closely and regularly so that you may not find a difficulty in understanding various terminologies especially related to economy tops pertains to sports what is meant by tops tops is target olympic podium scheme this is monitored by the ministry of youth affairs and sports the basic objective is just to identify and support potential medal winners for 2016 and 2020 olympic games but it has not yielded much dividends in 2016 olympic games let us wish best of luck for a top scheme as far as 2020 tokyo olympics are concerned look into the next one in a limited public trial world's first driverless taxis went into operation in singapore without a driver this robo taxi service is being tested in a small research campus of 4 square kilometers area and singapore government is planning to deploy driverless taxis from 2018 and the required software is developed by a united states based tech startup newtonomy right friends look at the next one the world's largest aircraft air lander 10 if someone talks about the world's largest aircraft that is air lander 10 and recently it was damaged after making a bumpy landing at the cardington airfield and if someone talks about the manufacturer the manufacturer is hybrid air vehicles of united kingdom other name for air lander 10 is hybrid air vehicle 304 and it gets its lift both from aerostatic as well as aerodynamic action right so this is all about the world's largest aircraft air lander 10 please look into this slide name the port which became the first major port in the country to avail loan facility through external commercial borrowing to develop infrastructure to develop infrastructure jawaharlal nehru port trust this is situated in mumbai recently it announced that it will raise 400 million dollars external commercial borrowing and here state bank of india and development bank of singapore will take care of raising this 400 million dollars from foreign countries and please don't forget there are 12 major ports in the country and jawaharlal nehru port trust at mumbai is the one among them and these 12 major ports are under the ministry of shipping please don't forget and at the same time sagarmala this is the flagship program to look at the port led infrastructure right friends look at the next one name the first state in the country to sign memorandum of understanding with the central government for development of air strips and a regional connectivity scheme under national civil aviation policy recently central government announced regional connectivity scheme under this scheme airports in the interior regions of the country will be developed airports situated in the hinterland of the country will be developed and maharashtra became the first state to sign with the central government under this regional connectivity scheme and please don't forget the jharkhand became the second state followed by gujarat and what the states will do states will give free of cost land second thing is they will reduce the taxes on air fuel concessional rates electricity water road infrastructure will be provided by the state governments or otherwise electricity and water will be provided at concessional rates and necessary road infrastructure will be developed by the states and it will cover unserved and underserved airports in the country and please don't forget under regional connectivity scheme air fare is fixed at rupees 2500 per one hour of journey and please don't forget rcf that is the regional connectivity fund will be created that will take care of viability gap funding 
regional connectivity fund will take care of viability gap funding that means to run an aircraft per one hour if the actual cost comes to 3500 per passenger then the gap of rupees 1000 will be taken care from regional connectivity fund right look into the next one RPI asked the banks to give loans to women self-help groups at the interest rate of 7% and all women self-help groups are eligible for loans up to Rs. 3 lakhs at 7% per annum and this is basically interest subvention. The average interest rate charged by the bank if suppose it is 11% SHGs are charged at 7%. As per the central government instructions, SHGs will be charged at 7%. And if the average interest rate of the banks is 11%, then the gap of this 4% is known as interest subvention or interest subsidy. And this gap of 4% will be paid by the central government to the banks. So that is interest subvention or interest subsidy here in a nutshell 7% interest will be charged by the banks to self-help groups and the interest subsidy of 4% or 5% will be paid by the central government to the banks and this is as per National Rural Livelihood Mission or NRLM. The new name for NRLM is Deen Dayal Anchodaya Yojana. Please don't forget. So, under Deen Dayal Anchodaya Yojana, this bank linkage with interest subvention is being undertaken by the central government for self help groups. And this Deen Dayal Anchodaya Yojana, the nodal agency is Ministry of Rural Development. Please don't forget. Look into the next question, the Nodal Authority for District Development Coordination and Monitoring Committee, Disha, is Ministry of Rural Development. Ministry of Rural Development is the Nodal Authority for Disha. And what is the purpose of Disha? Disha is basically for close monitoring of central government programs at Panchayat or local body level. And in each district, Disha will be headed by a member of parliament. Please don't forget. Look into the next one. LIDAR is in the news recently in connection with the self-driving cars. What is meant by LIDAR? LIDAR is light detection and ranging. 19th SARC summit is going to be held in Islamabad and Muri. SARC secretariat is situated in Kathmandu. Please look into this slide. This map shows all eight countries of SARC region and Afghanistan is the latest and eighth country in SARC. Name the country which is going to create the world's largest protected marine area. The world's largest protected marine area will be created by United States of America off the Hawaii coast. Hawaii Islands, please look into this slide. These are in Pacific Ocean. They are part of United States of America. United States of America has got 50 states and Hawaii is one such state which is situated in the Pacific. And now United States of America will develop the region around Hawaii coast as the world's largest protected marine area. Right, look into the next one. In World Risk Index 2016, released recently, India's rank is 77 out of 171 countries. And at the same time, I would like to tell you, island state of Onuwatu, this is ranked number one. Please look here. This is Onuwatu. This is in Pacific Ocean, somewhat nearer to Australia and New Zealand. And this is the most risk prone and it is uh, stated as world's number one as far as risk index is concerned. National Sports Day is being observed on 29th August. This is the birth anniversary of legendary hockey player John Chand. John Chand was born in Allahabad and his statue is available at Sipri Hill, Jhansi. 
and he is instrumental in getting the Olympic gold three consecutive times 1928 Amsterdam 1932 Los Angeles and 1936 Berlin so to commemorate birth anniversary of John Chand we celebrate 29th August as the national sports day president of the country participated in the first convocation of Nalanda University Nalanda University is in Rajgir Bihar and it was a large Buddhist monastery in the ancient kingdom of Magadha and it was a center of learning from almost 5th century AD to 12th century AD and it was ruined in 12th century when Turkish army led by Bhaktiyar Khilji destroyed it specifically in the year 1193 AD and now Government came up with the modern Nalanda University at a place near Rajkir in Bihar. Please look into this slide. This is the picture of Nalanda Mahavihara Bihar. Right friends, with this let us conclude questions and answers. Please do join for news capsules. Have a nice day. Thank you.